Today on EA College Football 25, we're going to be starting a Road to Glory series. Now obviously you guys know me as more of a dynasty or franchise content creator, but I wanted to do something a little bit different, step out of my neck of the woods, and try a Road to Glory mini-series, which is what we're going to be starting here today. The player I have chosen for this series is wide receiver Arturo Modelo. For those of you who have been around the channel, you probably know him pretty well. If not, let me introduce you. Arturo Modelo was our top receiver in the St. Louis Dragons franchise I had on Madden 24. Modelo was a third round selection out of the University of Miami, coming in at 6'1", 192 pounds. He's not the biggest, he's not the fastest, he's not the strongest, but he is as consistent as it gets. The guy knows how to get open, he lives in the end zone, he's got really good hands, and is a superb route runner. The Hall of Famer had a superb 12-year career with the Dragons, having won two Super Bowls, playing very well in both of those games, scoring four touchdowns across our two title wins. Modelo took half of his rookie season to find the field, and we never took him off after that. In 2029, he broke the NFL receptions record while getting the receiving triple crown. He recorded over 1,000 yards in his final 11 NFL seasons, finishing with seven Pro Bowls, led the NFL in receptions four times, and won the Offensive Player of the Year twice, finishing top 10 in receptions, yards, and touchdowns all time. Of course, we most well know him for his popular catchphrase when he scores a touchdown, it's Modelo time, and hopefully I'll get to say that a lot here in this Road to Glory. This is what his appearance is going to look like along with his equipment. Now, the one difference from the series in Madden to here is that I've given him a nice head of hair. I think what we're going to do as his collegiate career goes on is that we're going to change his hair, basically giving him less as the years go by, basically making him bald by the time he gets drafted. He's going to be a three-star contributor, and in terms of his playing style, I would consider him more of the route runner archetype, and I want to play true to that in this series. He's not necessarily a deep threat. He's not going to win with his physicality, so because of that, I'm not going to have him run streaks down the field or go up and get 50-50 balls consistently. I want to play in this series just as Arduro Modelo played in the Madden series. So this is what his ratings look like. They're all very balanced across the board. He really doesn't have any major weaknesses, which is a big part of his game. So what we want in our college career is finding a program that will develop us for the NFL. Now, obviously, that turned out to be true, but that's going to be his priority going back in time here and selecting a school. So obviously, in the Madden series, he went to the University of Miami, but... We're going to change things up a little bit and have him start a smaller school, giving us the option to transfer to Miami down the line or rewrite history and go somewhere else. So Modelo will be starting his collegiate career with the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers of the Sun Belt. He will open up as the number five receiver on the depth chart, and he's going to have to work his way up. The three-star from Pompano Beach, Florida has committed to the shots, and we will start our collegiate career with Coastal Carolina. It's going to be a battle getting on the field. He is not a day one starter. We're going to have to grind in practice, and hopefully as this year goes along, we're going to get more playing time. We have three skill points, and we're going to put them in the hands category. Modelo's hands were inconsistent early in his NFL career, but they really got better as the years went along, and I'd like to see that play out in his college career. This is what he looks like in his Coastal Carolina gear, by the way. Hopefully, we'll get to see him on the field plenty this season, but maybe not right away, being that he is the fifth stringer on the depth chart. We've got four players to pass, including three upperclassmen and another freshman, so it's not going to be easy, but we're going to have to perform well in practice while obviously keeping up our brand, leadership, and grades. So the offensive coordinator wants to talk to us about Coach Trust, just want to be positive, can't wait for the season to start, and try to show our coaches that we are dependable, we don't drop passes, we're willing to block, and our first practice did not start the best at all. First two targets were intercepted, but we rebounded nicely, finishing with a bronze in our first drill. Overall, not the best, but it's going to take some time to really get a feel for the college game, and hopefully he'll continue to improve in practice, get more skill points, and certainly use his energy points wisely. We're not going to go over the energy points every week, but I wanted to keep things balanced while especially focusing on getting better and earning coach trust. That way we can get on the field as quick as possible. 
Let's have a conversation here with Jamison Tucker, the number one receiver on the team. We're going to be rooming with him for the night and getting ready for practice together in the morning. Or are we? I think sabotaging here might be the move. Anyway, the other guys in the receiving room look worse. That's going to prop us up a notch. But we're going to big brain this. I don't think it would make sense to not wake him up when he oversleeps because he's going to know that we intentionally did that and will get mad. But if I mess up his phone alarm... He's not going to know that I did it. So that way, we're going to completely big brain this scenario, and it looks like it worked. Jameson came for practice late. That makes him look worse, and that makes us look better. That brings us into week one, our freshman debut against the Jacksonville State Gamecocks. Before that, though, we've got another practice, and I think here in this second practice, we definitely got a little bit more comfortable running routes, playing against collegiate defenders. We still only ended up with a bronze medal, but I think we performed better this time around than the last time. It seems like we're getting a little bit more comfortable within the offense, as that brings us here into week one. On the road against the Jacksonville State Gamecocks for our collegiate debut with Coastal Carolina. I'm not sure how much we're going to play, being that we are the number five receiver on the depth chart. And it doesn't look like we're going to play a lot. If at all. Jacksonville State seems to have the edge. We have not been put into the game yet. The offense has been quiet up to this point as we move into the third quarter. All of a sudden, now the offense is starting to cook a little bit. Take the lead. Eventually, we trail. Really close game here that would ultimately go into overtime, but the shots would be able to come back and get the win. We did not record a snap here in this first game, but at least the team won 49-47 to in dramatic fashion. A really exciting game, and it looks like the offense had no problems with Arturo not on the field. Five touchdown passes for both Zion Turner and our quarterback, Noah Kim. They transferred from Michigan State. The tight end, Cade Barron, 10 catches for 109 and a score. Jamison Tucker scored twice, but was otherwise pretty quiet. So maybe you should have gotten yourself up for practice, buddy. Nonetheless, we unfortunately didn't play. And Jamison Tucker found out that we sabotaged. The big brain plan backfired. So now all of our teammates hate us, and we've got a lot more work to do. So that means I've got to be the best teammate possible the rest of the year. Whatever you guys say, I will do. If I have to wear a Barbie backpack on the plane, so be it. I made a really bad mistake, and I've got to rebound. This is our academic advisor, Karen Jones. We're going to try in school. We're maybe not going to be the 4.0 student, but... We don't want to fail and be academically ineligible. We're also going to get our first NIL deal with Sheriff's Sporting Goods, so that's pretty exciting. And that'll bring us into our second game against FCS East. Realistically, since this is an FCS opponent, we should have no problem winning this game. So I'm hoping the team will like to put some of the younger guys in, particularly Arturo Modelo. So because of that, I really wanted to have a good practice. And ultimately, we ended up doing really well. We made a nice cut on this last play, going for the touchdown, getting the gold medal. I'm hoping that'll build up some coach trust. And thus, we can find ourselves on the field in the second half in what hopefully should be a blowout. It's the home opener on the teal field. I've brought out the teal uniforms for the occasion, but unfortunately it doesn't look like we're going to play in this game. The offense is really struggling unlike last week, but the defense on the other hand is playing really well. Despite that, FCS East is staying in the game. They just scored their first field goal. They then scored a touchdown to take the lead, and FCS East has won. We just lost to an FCS opponent. We scored, what, 47 last week? We scored 9. We didn't get a single touchdown. The passing game was mediocre. The run game was mediocre. None of the receivers were particularly all that good. I'm not saying I would have completely changed the outcome of the game, but it would have made sense to try to change things up and put in your talented three-star freshman. I do have some good news, though. We will get an opportunity for a position battle with Duplacis, who currently sits as the wide receiver four. So this is our opportunity to make waves on the depth chart. For this position battle, we've got three mini games, and we have to outscore him in two of them. So as long as we win two, we'll be fine. In order to outscore him, we need to get a bronze medal, which for this first game is 2,000 points. Luckily, it ended up being pretty easy. This is a drill that I would say I ended up being pretty good at, and I was able to get the bronze medal within 25 seconds. We ended up capping off the drill very nicely, finishing with a gold medal with multiple seconds to spare. 
So a really good first impression in minigame number one as we blew our opponent's score out of the water going for the big play at the end and we got it! Finishing with 9,000 points. That'll bring us into the second game and if we win this one, we will become the wide receiver four. Again, it was pretty quick. This touchdown alone gave us exactly 2,000 points, which is all we needed to beat him. We didn't do as well as the rest of the battle went along, but we still ended up with a bronze medal. So I've already guaranteed myself as the wide receiver for it. So because of that, I didn't have to win this last battle. I still wanted to perform well. I made this ridiculous catch at the end, but... Unfortunately, I only got a bronze medal, but it didn't matter because we outscored our opponent in all three games, meaning that we are now the wide receiver four. We're not a starter yet, but we're certainly closer to it, and wide receiver fours generally see the field occasionally, whether it's four wide receiver sets or a priority substitution. So because of that, we should get some run here in week three at the link against the Temple Owls. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to be getting a lot of run early, and it wouldn't be until late in the fourth quarter where Arturo Modelo finally gets an opportunity. Mom, get the camera. I'm in the game. And it's a high leverage spot. We're down by four. It's a third and three with around a minute and a half to go. Our first play is going to not be a target to us, but it is caught for a first down by the tight end. And immediately we will be taken out of the game after just one play and one route run. Ultimately, the shots would end up scoring. They would score a field goal, bringing us into another overtime. And this time, we fall in OT. Temple hangs on to get the win at home, 34-32. to At least we can say we played in this game. We had one snap, but we were in there, I guess. The offense has performed very well this year when we're not playing against FCS opponents. But this time, it was the defense who let us down. We're trying to catch up to the wide receiver three. We've got some work to do, but hopefully we'll be able to get there sooner than later. Again, I want to be as polite as possible to our teammates. I want to be as good of a teammate as possible, do the dirty work. We're going to study here, but not too much. I want to use my energy on getting coach trust, performing well at practice, and improving as a player. I ended up getting another bronze medal in practice this week. Certainly not my best performance but we're continuing to get coach trust points we're continuing to move up and we're getting closer and closer to a potential position battle with the wide receiver three i really want to add some more skill points want to improve that rating that way our coaches are going to see us as a guy who's been working hard and getting better so that brings us here into week four a power five matchup against the university of virginia we're one and two we've lost two in a row i really don't expect to find the field today and I ultimately ended up being correct. Shocker. Unfortunately, we would end up losing to Virginia 22-14. More of a low-scoring game here. The defense wasn't as bad as they were last week, but the offense wasn't as good. I feel like the biggest issue offensively has been the run game. We haven't been able to run the ball well at all. The starter, Washington, averaged 2.5 yards per carry. The number three receiver, Malik Mega, had one catch for six yards and a drop. I don't know, coach. It looks like maybe you could use an upgrade there at that third spot. Not quite yet, though. We ended up doing okay on our last test. As kind of expected, the GPA remains unchanged. It's around a three. So we're going to really focus again here in practice. Going for the gold, and we're able to get it on the final play of practice. That'll give us 500 coach trust points, and we're really close to a position battle. But unfortunately, it's not going to be this week. There's an off-campus party this week. Want to go? I've got to focus. I've got to stay in the classroom and do my studies on the field. I'm very close to becoming a potential starter for this team. I don't want to mess anything up. So even if that means I can't go to the party, so be it. That brings us into week five against Old Dominion. Our team is one and three. We need a win. It would certainly be helpful if, you know, we could get on the field, but it doesn't look like that'll end up being the case. Luckily, the offense ended up having a really good game, but it wouldn't matter. We lose again in overtime, 41-39. to Why does this team have to play all of these such dramatic close games? Outside of the Virginia matchup, in which we only lost by eight, every other game has been decided by no more than two points. 
The run game again was bad. The pass game was good though. So still, it's not like they really need me per se to improve the outcome of the team. We just have to continue to perform in practice. We had an unbelievable week this time, crushing the drill and getting the gold medal pretty easily. And it looks like we could be set for a position battle with the wide receiver three, possibly next week. But that's at least one more game on the bench, on the road, against the James Madison University Dukes. Unfortunately, the SimCast portion of this game did not save. But our team ended up getting the win by one, 23 to 22. Why does every game have to be so dramatic? We were down 19 to seven going into the fourth quarter, but the offense put on a show down the stretch. The wrong game honestly wasn't too bad. The passing game was certainly solid down the stretch. I give the team credit. We were in danger of losing our fifth consecutive game, but we saved our season. We get a little bit of momentum. We still got some work to do though at two and four. We're not quite ready for the position battle yet, but we're right there in terms of being even in terms of coach trust. We didn't do well on our recent test though. Straight C's, which is odd because I feel like we studied quite a bit. I put a number of points into the GPA, but we did not perform well. The GPA does sit at a 3.2. I don't know how we could get straight C's and the GPA is still a 3, but okay. That brings us into this next drill, more so focusing on after the catch. We've got to run away from all of these defenders. This was a really hard one. I ended up doing it a couple of times because I had fun with it, but I was only able to get a silver medal. Luckily, though, that's going to give us enough coach trust to pass the wide receiver three on the list, meaning that we'll get to have a position battle with Malik Mayega next week to possibly become a starter. So that means it looks like, if all goes well, this could be our last game on the bench as we face off against the University of Louisiana, the Raging Cajuns. We're not going to really play here once again, and unfortunately, the team lost 39-31. to This time, we blew a nice lead going into the fourth quarter. The defense allowed 22, getting outscored there by 19 in the final stretch. We were up by two scores going into the fourth, but we blew it. Noah Kim was inconsistent, 45% completion percentage, three interceptions. The receivers were all decent. Malik Mayega, one catch for seven yards and a drop. Looks like you guys could use an upgrade there at that third spot. And we're going to have an opportunity to battle for it right here. We've been on the bench for seven games. We've played one snap so far this year, but finally, we're going to get an opportunity to get on the field. We're going to talk with the head coach as we look to potentially set ourselves into the starting lineup. So the position battle is gonna work the exact same way as the last one. We have to win two of the three mini games. The bronze medal is sort of the benchmark. I wish for the higher spots on the depth chart, it was a little bit harder. But as you can see, making defenders miss, strutting into the end zone, we win the first drill pretty easily. We ended up performing really well. Going for the gold medal here on this last reception, Obviously, the focus is on getting bronze and winning, but I'd love to get as high of the score as possible. What a move! Showboating for 20,000 points. The wide receiver route tree, I think, is the drill that I'm the best at. I've mastered this one really quickly, and it only took me three or four attempts to ultimately get the bronze medal, which we would only finish with the bronze, unfortunately, but that's all we need. We've won the position battle. We're gonna be the wide receiver three, and because of that, I got a little bit excited during this last drill, and I didn't perform too well. We didn't get a medal, and we lost. But it's fine. We won the battle. We're now the wide receiver three. We should be a starter with significant playing time. Who will our first actual game be against here this week? Well, unfortunately, it will be against nobody, because we have a bye week. So we're going to simulate, and our first actual opportunity to play will be against the Troy Trojans. I've got some extra skill points that I've been saving up. I haven't been able to add many skill points because, well, I've had one down played so far this year. But I'm going to put it into elusiveness, trying to get a little bit more dynamic after the catch. And that'll bring us into this Sunbelt matchup on the road at Troy, who is 4-4. Four and four. Coastal Carolina, meanwhile, sits at a record of 2-5. and five. This is going to be our first opportunity as the starter, as the wide receiver three. We should be able to get into the game here during this first offensive possession. And they're not putting us in the game. 
Did I not just win the position battle? What's going on? Did these guys not want me on the field that badly? Eventually, we would get our first opportunity in this game. There's four seconds left in the half. Our team is up 6-3. to three. Kim throws it to me immediately, and it's intercepted. I did not call for the ball there. I don't know what Noah Kim was thinking. I was not open. I did not want him to throw me the ball, but he got rid of it as soon as he snapped it. So that'll wrap up the first half. A defensive battle, 6-3. to three. It feels like in every game, either just the offense does well or just the defense does well. There's no consistency with this team. Both sides of the ball are not in sync at all. Today, the defense has been brilliant. Only three points allowed, but the offense, which is six. Part of that could be that we haven't really been on the field. We've been there for one snap, and it was an interception. We will get an opportunity, though, early in the third quarter. It's a third down and three. We're going to look to go for the slant route, and there it is! Our first reception as a college player. It goes for around five yards. It'll be a first down, and we'll be taken out of the game immediately. It would be short-lived, though. We'd get an opportunity here in the red zone. Third and goal. It's still 6-3, to three, and we're looking for that first touchdown. We'll see if we can get it in motion, moving to the left. It looks like I'm wide open, and it's overthrown! I was wide open! I had the opportunity to get my first career touchdown, but Noah Kim mistimed the pass. We were on the field today for three snaps. Noah Kim targeted us all three times, only ending up with one reception for five yards. And as you can see here, the defense would not hold them late, but they would get a stop right at the end. And we end up winning 12 to 10 with field goals in all four quarters. A quiet first start, if you will, for Arturo Modelo. I don't know if you can count it as start. I played three snaps and got the ball once. Is Coastal Carolina this committed to redshirting me? I mean, we only have four games left. I can theoretically play in two of them, I guess. I don't know why they really don't want me on the field, but it is what it is. Now, I will say, though, we are going to battle with the wide receiver, too, here this very next week. If we win this battle, I would certainly think we're going to be, like, an actual starter who's on the field consistently. Parker wants to potentially look to help me improve my grade. The TA gave him a sheet with the answers for the test. And look, I've got to focus on winning this position battle. I can't put energy into studies. Send it over. Our GPA takes a mild boost. So it looks like cheating paid off. That brings us into our wide receiver two battle against DeAndre Coleman. We've got to win two out of three of these drills. The first one, as you can see here, I ended up winning pretty easily. So one down, one to go. This should finally be where we have an opportunity to play. Some teams don't run three receiver sets a lot. But every team has two receivers on the field. That brings us into this second drill. And I crushed it out of the park again. I didn't get that crazy of a score. But it doesn't really... Why are we running backwards? I don't know what's going on here. But we got the bronze medal, which is the important thing. And ultimately, that's going to be enough to win the battle and become the starter. Bringing us into this last drill, which again is probably the one I'm best at. I ended up with a silver, winning all three competitions. I've won the battle. I'm the wide receiver too. And it looks like we're actually going to play a lot here during these final four games. Speaking of four, look at the GPA. 4.0, baby. That's what it's all about. I've been kind of studying, but I haven't been studying that hard. I'm surprised it's a four. That'll bring us into this Sun Belt game against the Appalachian State Mountaineers. Our team is currently 3-5, and five, and we've really got to run the table if we want to make a bowl game. We're going to have to win three of our last four. It's going to be a challenge, but now that I think we're actually going to be on the field, it might be possible. On the teal turf, it's a night game against one of the better teams in the conference, and as you can see, we're actually going to be playing. First play of the game... We're on the field. We are a true starter in the run game. I want to be the best blocking receiver this coaching staff has ever seen. Obviously, I want to make an impact as a pass catcher, getting open, catching the football. But my way of staying on the field for all three downs is dominating at the line of scrimmage as a run defender. We're going to run our first pattern of the day looking for the out route, and we got the foot inbounds. It's a gain of around 12. It'll go for a first down our second career collegiate reception. 
Looking for another one here, but it's a run play. So, again, let's dominate this corner. Let's intimidate him. Let's be the most physical guy on the field, making his life hell. Our team is in the red zone. They would eventually score a touchdown, and we're up 10-3. to The team seems to be doing pretty well, but they did take me off the field for an extended period of time. So it looks like I'm going to be on the field on a very on and off basis. It still doesn't seem like the coaching staff has full trust in us, but they want to play us often because they think we're obviously good enough. On that play, I was wide open, but we didn't get the ball, and that'll bring us into the third quarter with just one catch so far. Still want to focus on blocking well, but they ran it up the middle on third and seven for God knows what reason. We catch the ball here. It's a screen, and we get lit up behind the line of scrimmage. That was a horrible play design, and my teammates did not block for me well at all. They set me up to get killed. Here's possibly my third reception. It looks like I was able to hang on. It goes for around five yards. I'm just looking to get open here in the short area of the field. This is where I feel most comfortable. But we make a nice play here on the out route, dragging the foot inbounds. That'll go for a first down. And now it seems like we're on the same page as Noah Kim. Here's reception number five, the third of this possession. And they would eventually take me out of the game there. But it seems like we're finally building up a nice little rapport with Noah Kim. Five catches now for 38 yards four of which have come here in the third. Looking to make plays here in the fourth. Our team is performing really well. We've got a nice lead. Really nice block here. And that's going to lead to a touchdown. An impressive work blocking from Arturo Modelo, directly responsible for giving Washington some room to score. And our team's actually winning in a blowout. Short throw is going to be dropped, taking a big hit. We've gotten a few hospital balls thrown our way. The quarterback and the receivers blocking around us are not doing favors. Another out route. This one is caught again inbounds. What a great job of keeping the feet in. The signature Modelo out route never fails. Our team is up 41-20, to and at this point, we're going to be running the ball for pretty much the rest of the game. So that means I get to block. I feel like blocking might be more fun than running patterns and catching the ball. I don't know why, there's just something so satisfying about throwing this defensive back to the ground. Big win here for the Shots of Clears against one of the best teams in the Sun Belt in Appalachian State as we take this one home 41-20. to Overall, I feel really good about my first game. Six receptions, blocked my tail off. Not necessarily many big plays in the receiving game. We had a few short catches. We had a few nice plays on out routes. Really not stretching the field vertically much. But we were able to get open. We only had the one drop, which was more so because of the big hit from the defensive back. I'd still like to average more than 7.8 yards per catch. But it looks like Arturo Modelo is kind of a receptions merchant. Just as he was in the Dragon series. Five yards after catch is the one statistic that I really don't like there. I want to give myself better opportunities after the catch. And that might mean that I'm going to need to look to stretch the field vertically a little bit more. Our fan favorite mental ability has been upgraded as we're going to simulate the week. We've got three games to go against Marshall, Georgia Southern, and Georgia State. All three of these teams are basically in the same spot that we are as mediocre teams in the Sun Belt looking to clinch a bowl berth. Your professor has informed the academic center that you were caught cheating. They got me. The 4.0 GPA is no more. Fan favorite is deactivated. That doesn't really make sense. Why would the fans dislike me more for cheating on the test? I feel like that's kind of relatable. And because of that, they would appreciate me more. I don't know. Our GPA dips all the way from 4 to 2.8. Yikes. That'll bring us into this game here against Marshall. We've got some more skill points saved up. I'm going to put them into route running. Obviously, that's been our biggest strength. And I want to continue to make that a strength as I look to play with Modelo as authentically as possible from the Madden series. So that'll bring us here on the road against the Marshall Thundering Herd. Looking to capitalize off of a pretty good first game as we catch that pass for a gain of around seven. I'm not sure if that was targeted for me, but I guess that works. Short throw to the sideline is caught again, and we end up with the first down. I think the biggest thing I can say about myself so far is pretty much every target of mine I've caught for the most part. And obviously, again, I've done a really good job blocking. And would like to say that I'm certainly part of the reason why Washington had a big run there. On the screen now, third catch of the drive. And I'm out of bounds after gaining a couple. Third and two. They're going to run the ball. And we really blocked a little bit too well there. So much so that we get called for an illegal block in the back. 
Again, we got a little bit excited there. Freshman mistake. Got a little bit too engaged with the defender. And got a little bit too physical. So that'll back us up quite a bit. It's now third and ten. Kim keeps it himself. Gets the first and more. So it works out. Big run for Kim. I did a pretty good job blocking there. We'd end up with a touchdown and it's 7-0. Again, flattening the defender. Giving Noah Kim plenty of room to run for a big play out of bounds. Now we got a screen for one of our other receivers. Big block for me, but the receiver still loses plenty of yards. Second and 12. Deep shot for the end zone. Wide open is the tight end, Cade Barong. I would like to say that I was kind of the decoy there. Both of the corners turned their attention to me. I'm like the perfect Kyle Pitts. Look at this. Another big play for the offense. Everything is going well on this side of the ball. Noah Kim is having a great game. Cade Barron, the tight end, has been brilliant. I've been quiet receiving-wise since the first quarter as Noah Kim puts a little bit too much velocity on that pass. Not enough arc. After some extended time out of the game, it's now 24-17 as that pass is off the mark. Third and short, it's an out route, and that one again is off the mark. My chemistry with Noah Kim was so much better in the first game than it is now. I had three receptions on that first drive for around 16 yards, but haven't gotten the ball since then. 16 yards and a half is not good enough if I want to maintain my starting spot. Into the second half, that's a good start. Nice play after the catch. Essentially doubling my yardage total for the day. I've got to find this seam within the defense. Maybe look to go up the middle a little bit more as that throw is towards my feet. Noah Kim has been inefficient looking my way today minus that first drive. He has not been particularly effective. What a block there. 27-24. Marshall's continuing to make this game closer now into the second half. That'll bring us into the fourth quarter. Same score. We're moving it down the field pretty nicely. Second and inches. Another really impressive block and a nice first down for Christian Washington. Following play. Another good block. Washington breaks a tackle and he is inside the five. Now we've got an opportunity here to extend the lead. I'm still looking for my first career touchdown, but they're just going to run the ball. An impressive block as it's now 34-27 with around five minutes to go. We just got to run the ball efficiently and win this game. I certainly have not had my best performance in the air, but if we can get the win, I won't be too upset. Another good set of blocking there. I really like it when the defender's on press coverage with me. That way I get to line up across from him immediately and go for him as soon as the ball is snapped. Third and one, what a block! First down for the shots as we continue to choose some clock. Following play, it's a pass, and I hang on for a gain of the round nine. After losing some yardage, though, it's now third and seven. I'm going to look for the curl route here, and I cannot hang on. Big hit from the corner, and it's incomplete. Defense will get the stop. We've got it back on offense. It's a screen, and I get lit up. Losing yardage. So Marshall will get the stop. They would tie it. It's now 34-34. And because of that, you'd think we'd be looking to pass the ball, move it down the field quickly, but we're still running it. Under a minute to go. First down. We're looking downfield. What a catch there by the tight end, Baron. I think the quarterback was originally looking for me there, but I guess not. Second down now. On the out route, I come down with this reception for a first down. We're moving it pretty well. We're getting pretty close to field goal range. As Noah Kim is intercepted! And Marshall's got all this room to score. We're going to try to do our best DK Metcalf impression, but we're not going to catch up. Josh Moten with a 63-yard pick six with seconds left on the clock. Noah Kim, why did you throw that ball? That was our final snap of the day. Marshall completes the comeback 41-34. to We end up falling with three touchdowns from Cole Pennington. I had a solid game, seven catches, probably around 50 yards. But ultimately, Noah Kim there kind of blew it down the stretch. But I'm still performing pretty well, so much so that I'm going to get an opportunity to be the wide receiver one. But finals are coming up just a couple of weeks away. I've still got to keep up on my exams. But I've got an opportunity to become the number one receiver here during my freshman year. I ended up killing it in the position battle. I won all three mini games. It wasn't even really close. I did my job, and with that, I'm going to be the number one receiver for the Coastal Carolina Shots of Clears for the rest of the way. I dominated Jamison Tucker, who, of course, I sabotaged earlier in the year. Now I'm taking his job. So with that, 
I'm the top man on the totem pole, and I'm going to get even more playing time here through these final two regular season games. Our team is 4-6. and six. We've got to win out if we want to make a ball game. We've got Georgia Southern today here at home for Senior Day, and we wrap things up on the road against Georgia State. Both of these teams are pretty much the same record as we are, so they're in the exact same spot as us. Even though I'm the number one receiver, I've still got to focus on the run game. No block, no rock. But I think Noah Kim's going to look my way more as that time it's broken up. If he had put a little bit more loft on that pass, I could have turned it into a big gain. Every throw that Noah Kim makes is a bullet pass. Here I am wide open, goes for around 15 yards. I want to go downfield more as a route runner. I don't want these consistent 6-7 yard gains. I want more like 16-17 yards. But again, we still got to focus on blocking. Show the offense that I'm a dependable teammate. Show Noah Kim that I'm willing to do the dirty work. I definitely did not call for the ball there. I don't know why Noah Kim threw it. He's got to stop throwing hospital balls. He's trying to kill me at this rate. But nonetheless, I'm off to a really good start. Three catches so far today, all three of which have gone for first downs. I want to get open past the first down marker consistently, just as I do here, but my knee is down at the half yard line. That would have been my first touchdown, but the defensive back was able to bring me down at the last second. Our team is playing pretty well, though, so far. It's 14-7, to trying to get open up the middle. What a shot! How did I hang on to that football? Again, Noah Kim is going to literally murder me at this rate. Our team would bring it in the red zone, and ultimately we would score. It's 21-7. From there, they held me out basically for a full quarter. I don't know what the deal is with that, but it's 28-21. Coastal Carolina is ahead. I'm wide open down the field with a nice play after the catch. One of my longest receptions of the year so far. And for whatever reason, they're going to take me out of the game. I don't know why, but okay. So now it is a second down here. We're trying to catch the cornerback off guard. Doing mind games with him. Getting open to the left side. Too easy. There was nobody towards that area of the field. I think I'm at seven catches today. Really, really strong game for me so far. Seven receptions for 80 yards. I think the biggest thing is that I'm getting open downfield. Maybe not necessarily these huge chunk plays, but I'm consistently getting open past the first down marker. Our team is now up by 14. There's reception number eight on the day. Another first down. Trying to stutter step away from the corner. Noah Kim sends it to the other side of the field and the tight end, Cade Barron, makes a huge play continuing his outstanding season. He's easily our best offensive skill position player. Looks like I'm wide open here. I don't know why I went up the middle. There was more space towards the outside. That was a pretty bad decision in hindsight as it's ultimately an incomplete pass. 38 to 21 now, our team has the lead as I'm not able to hang on to that one. I was playing really well early, but a couple of drops here towards the end of this game have kind of ruined what was supposed to be a huge momentum boost. I would catch my next pass, though. Reception number nine on the day. Looking for double digits, and there it is. Ten receptions for 105 yards. My first double-digit receiving game and my first 100-yard game ultimately leading Coastal Carolina to the win. 45-35. Today, it was about the offense. Another lackluster day by the defense, but it didn't matter. I played really well, as did Noah Kim. 91% completion percentage, 372 yards and four touchdowns. That may very well win the NCAA's Offensive Player of the Week, or at the very least, it's got to be the Sun Belt Player of the Week. I mean, he was brilliant, and overall, he certainly hasn't been perfect this year, but I feel like he has been a generally good quarterback. 10 catches for 105 yards for me, but again, only 5 yards after the catch. I want to get more active with the ball in my hands. It's just that all these passes I'm catching are right near defensive backs. I've got to do a better job of creating separation, and I feel like Noah Kim's got to put me in a better position as a passer of giving me the ball when there's no defenders near me. So that's going to bring us into our final regular season game of the year on the road against Georgia State. Both of these teams are 5-6. and six. Winner is eligible for a bowl game. Loser, season's over. So this could be my last game of my freshman year. So because of that, I want to make the best impression possible going into the offseason. But ideally, I'd love to have one more game with the fellas as we catch the out route there for around seven. Looking downfield, I'm wide open. And I'm able to hang on for my second reception of the game. That'll go for a first down. Third and five, running the ball. No block, no rock. He didn't get the first down, though. He actually lost some yardage, but... I did my part. 
So now it's three to nothing. So far, the defense is holding strong. What a move there on the corner. I'm able to stay in bounds enough to get the first down. My third reception of the game. That'll bring us into the second quarter. I'm wide open downfield. Why does he only throw bullet passes? If he puts loft into that pass, that's probably a 40-yard touchdown. But instead, he's throwing line drives. Noah, you're not a pitcher. Your throws need some more arc. But here on third and nine, he throws me a line drive when I want more of a bullet pass. I'm going out of bounds with defenders near me. That's when you throw the line drive. Following possession. Look at all this space. Wide open down the field. My longest play as a Coastal Carolina shot to clear. It goes for around 30. And they'll immediately take me out of the game. So from there, both teams would tack on some field goals. It's now 10-6. Risky throw here for the sideline. This time, Noah Kim places the ball perfectly, and my body control helps me come down with that one. Five catches, 80 yards. Another play downfield, and I'm finally becoming a little bit more confident as a vertical threat. Downfield again. This time, I can't hang on. We were going for the 50-50 ball. Our team would end up scoring, and we now lead 12-10. Looking to get open here for the sticks. The signature Modelo out route continues to work to a T. I've got to be pretty close to 100 yards again, and I think that play will do it for the second consecutive game in the triple figures in terms of yards, but I'm not done. Open up the middle, but instead he goes to the other receiver. That works too. Brings us inside the five, and ultimately we would end up scoring again. Georgia State adds a field goal, so it's 19-13. That was a risky throw, nearly intercepted. That could have been bad. I've got to do a better job of getting open, and this time I do. It goes for a first down, and I'm able to stay in bounds, helping the clock continue to move. Second and eight. He overthrows me, bringing us to a pivotal third and eight. This might be the most important play of our season. If we can get the first down, we can put ourselves in a good spot. So because of that, if possible, I want the ball. I want to make the play. Breaking the tackle, and I get the first down. Maybe the biggest offensive play of the year for Coastal Carolina. And it's me who saves the day. My 10th reception. I've got 143 yards. And ultimately, we would score a field goal. Getting the ball back up by 9. Back in the red zone. Looking to put the dagger into the heart of Georgia State. As we do with a touchdown there by Christian Washington. And it looks like our season will get one more game. The Coastal Carolina Shanta Clears will be bowl eligible as we defeat Georgia State 28-13. It was a rough start to the year for our team. We started 1-4, but we've really battled back, winning five of our final seven regular season games. And I'd like to say I'm a big part of that. In the four games where I've gotten real playing time, our team is 3-1 and, and possibly a game-winning pick six away from being 4-0. I was one of the best players on the field in this game. My second consecutive game with 10 receptions, and I was able to do more after the catch. I finished with a career high, 143 yards. Still looking for that first touchdown, but I've really built up a pretty nice rapport with Noah Kim, and while he's not a perfect quarterback, this game in particular, he missed a number of throws, but I feel like our chemistry has really grown since I first gotten on the field. And so with that, we'll find out who we're gonna be playing in the ball game pretty shortly. But first, our final exams, straight C's. I'm a little bit surprised that we didn't score higher. I feel like I've kept up on my studying, but let's look at the bright side. C's get degrees, and even more so, 10 reception games will make you an NFL draft pick, which is probably a little bit more important than a degree. So with that, we are going to simulate into bowl week. And ultimately, we'll find out who we're going to play against as Dylan Gabriel wins the Heisman, 46 touchdowns. All Sunbelt freshman team after just playing four games, pretty much. Impressive. We'll be headed to Orlando for the Cure Bowl, facing off against the Toledo Rockets of the MAC. Toledo had a pretty good season, 8-5 and five in a fun and exciting Group 5 conference. So we're probably the underdog going into this game. But we want to have our freshman season end off on a positive note get another win, and give us some momentum for our sophomore season, whether it's here as a starter with Coastal Carolina or possibly at a bigger school in the transfer portal. Making a nice reception early, taking a shot from the safety, but hanging on for the first down. On third down, looking up the middle, it's a jump ball incomplete. Again, that's really not my game. I'm not sure why Noah Kim is looking to get me these one-on-one -on -one jump ball plays. Short throw on the out route, it's caught with a broken tackle. 
and a first down. And had we been able to stay in bounds, we could have done a little bit more there. But still an impressive conversion. Another first down. They're running the ball. No block. No rock, of course. As it goes for a solid conversion to around midfield. Second and 11 now. In the red zone. Kim's looking for me, but it's broken up. I had two guys near me. I don't think I called for the ball there. I don't really know why he threw it. We would end up with a field goal, but we're now trailing 7-3. And that'll bring us to the second quarter. On first down, I was open down the field. But again, all this guy does is throw bullet passes. If he puts more arc on that pass, it's a huge gain. Third and four, up the middle, I'm wide open, I've got a block. I should have done a better job, though, getting around the tight end. He gave me a great block. If I didn't run into him, that could have been a bigger gain. Try to get towards the left side and run to the outside. Here's a nice play on the out route. It goes for around seven or eight yards. Four catches, 55 yards already. Here in press coverage, looking to get open. Good separation as it goes for a solid gain. They'll take me out, but they'll bring me back shortly. Third and two in the red zone. Looking to get some space with a nice move. Open room ahead. It's a touchdown. It's Modelo time. Arturo Modelo with his first collegiate touchdown. He's doing the gritty in the end zone. And Coastal Carolina makes it 10 to 7. Really good job there. Getting separation early off of the line of scrimmage from the defensive back. You can make the argument there might have been a little bit of a push-off, but hey, I'm not complaining. A great job there by Modelo to get open. A great celebration as well. A-plus dancing ability. Mom, get the camera. I'm doing the gritty. So it's 10-7. Kim's looking right back my way again. It's another out route, and it goes for a first down. My seventh reception of the game. I'm looking for another double-digit catch outing. There's another first down. Again, consistently catching the ball past the first down marker. That's been the goal over these last three games, and I think that's why I've really gotten better. Up the middle. That was a risky throw, but the defensive back in front of me didn't see the ball coming. Nine receptions now on the day here. It's still only 10-7. I have our team's only touchdown of the game. There's reception number 10 just outside of the end zone, going along with 127 yards. Here at the one-yard line, looking for what would be our second touchdown of the game. And I won't get it. It's broken up in the secondary. Double coverage. Probably shouldn't have called for that one. And Noah Kim probably shouldn't have thrown it. That was on both of us. Fourth and inches. I love the ballsiness. They're going to go for it. And we got it. It's a Coastal Carolina touchdown for Christian Washington. And it's now 17-7 in favor of the Shots. Toledo would add a field goal, though, making it 17-10. Nice spin move after the catch for my 11th reception of the game. They'll immediately take me out shortly thereafter. Third down and 10 now. Open on the out route once more, and it goes for another first down. 12 catches for a buck 55. Call me 7-11 because I'm open all day. Risky throw up the middle on the slant route. That goes incomplete here in the fourth quarter. But our team's really playing well here down the stretch. Right as I say that, Noah Kim throws a pick. I don't think I called for the ball there. I don't know why he threw it. But it doesn't matter. Our team has a nice lead, 27-10. to 10. The offense is scoring at a high level in the third. That was nearly intercepted again. Toledo just scored a touchdown as well. Noah Kim's got to be careful. We could be in serious danger of blowing this game if he keeps throwing the ball to the other team. Third and three. Hanging on there for the first down. That was a risky throw. But Noah Kim this time threads the needle perfectly. That'll move the chains. Gives us an opportunity to choose some clock. And ultimately that would be the dagger. The Coastal Carolina shots of clears finish out the season on a three-game winning streak. We win the Cure Bowl 27-17 on the backs of another really good game from Arturo Modelo. And Noah Kim was pretty solid himself. 72% completion percentage, 367 yards, two touchdowns. Sure, he had some bad throws in that fourth quarter, but luckily we were able to hang on to the win. I had easily the best game of my college career. 13 receptions for 172 yards and a touchdown. And I feel like we really have done a good job of playing authentically to Arturo Modelo. Very similar to his rookie year. Took him around half the season to really find the field consistently. Once he did, though, he played too well to be taken off the field. We were a lot better after the catch. Nearly a third of our yards came with the ball in our hands. 
And there you go. Cure Bowl winners. This has got to be up there with Arturo Modelo's career accomplishments. Two Super Bowls, two Offensive Player of the Years, four-time receptions leader, seven-time Pro Bowler, but the Cure Bowl, his freshman year at Coastal Carolina, might top them all. UCF ended up winning the national championship. Would you believe that? UCF wins a real championship this time, not a fake one. The playoff bracket ended up going haywire. A lot of the simulations I've done, I feel like have been pretty realistic. This one, we had chaos, which I guess isn't entirely a bad thing. For my freshman season, I finished with 47 catches for 519 yards and a touchdown. Second on the team in catches, third on the team in yards. And now that gives us a decision. Here in the offseason, we've got an opportunity to enter the transfer portal. We've got some options. There's a number of teams that we could be a starter for. We could look to transfer to the University of Miami, just as Arturo Modelo went to in the series. We could also look to stay at Coastal Carolina for at least one more season. We can either follow Arturo's path in the actual Dragons franchise, or we can rewrite history. Let me know where you think Arturo Modelo should play next year down below in the comments. Let me know what you thought of this first episode of the miniseries. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Peace out.